I'm Emily Cockwood, professional artist of Studio A, doing a beautiful art class of beautiful painting. Emily Crockford is an artist in Sydney who loves to paint things that make her feel bright and happy. I do painting, drawing and collage. I love like pink daisies and colours and patterns like details like love hearts, stars or bees. Birds and nature and music to feel it was by you to go outside and sit down in the sunshine. Emily has been an Archibald finalist three times and specialises in large format works like murals and installations. This is her studio at home and today she's going to lead you through some ideas to make an artwork that helps you find your brightness. Aim to be in a space, either physical or mental, that is comfortable for you. For Emily, this includes making a cup of tea or having a special treat nearby for when she needs a break. You can keep things nearby that you find comforting, like your favourite t-shirt, photos of family members or pets, or having your favourite TV show on in the background. Emily paints with music on and has a little dance when she needs a break. Once you feel comfortable, you're ready to paint. Materials. Canvas, lead pencils, acrylic paint, paint brushes, plasters, pressing paper, photos, lipstick. Now it's time to find your references. You can find ideas in magazines, an iPad, a book, or even just your imagination to think of things that you'd like to make an artwork about. Other images like daisies and colourful flowers. That's like a moon and the stars. Rainbows and colourful. And there's a tree bird, like blues and greens, oranges and reds. Now it's time to create your composition. There are a few different techniques you can use and Emily likes to use all of them, sometimes separately. But in this case, we're going to try them all together. The first option is tracing, where you use tracing paper and a lead pencil. I'm going to take my canvas on the on transfer of the sketch, get my lead pencil, trace on the canvas, scratch on the back. Then you flip it over and use your pencil on the other side to transfer the lead onto the canvas. You can also try collage. Cut out the image that you like and paste it on. You can play around with where you put this before you glue it in place. It's so tiny. I'm just going to trim it because it's a bit too. Put one next to the moon. Okay. A little baby could be next to the moon. I could have a few flowers like down the bottom. Look, with the the moon and the flowers in the bottom. <laughs> Done. I glued down the birds. <laughs> Lastly. You can try freehand drawing by looking at the image and then drawing onto your canvas. Yeah, you like it. The next step, I could do paint it on the background and then do the designs on top. Now it's time to bring in some color with acrylic paint. If painting is too difficult, you could colour your canvas with Poscas, which are a very special paint pen. They cover the surface very easily. So that's my Poscas. Paint your background first as a base colour. I could do it on the sides in the background. And you put bright colours in, like pinks for the flowers. And it'll be yellow for the stars. You can add a second layer for a more opaque look and speed up the drying time by using a hairdryer or putting your work in the sun. This is a good time to make a cup of tea or coffee and have a little break. Just, just really. 
Now add detail and top coats. When your base coat is dry, you can add a second coat of paint to be more opaque and bold. Or you can use your medium poskas or finer markers to add details and patterns. I will do the moon first, a couple of moons and then do the pinks with the flowers. I thought I might use a dark pink. You can choose contrasting or harmonising colours to create patterns, outlines and vibrancy in your work. Patterns that Emily likes to add are dots, zigzags, swirlies, spirals and dashes. Once your base coat is done, you can do any other sections that need paint. Yay! I love it so much. Now I'm going to dry it down and do the last coats on the last bit of painting and then start using the first dress. So I can do outlines and details on the flowers and the stars and the, the moon and I'm just going to do real tiny patterns, not too much on the birds. The Posca actually helps for the outlines. Let's do this. Sometimes you will need to activate the Poscas by shaking them back and forth and gently pressing the tip on some scrap paper until the colour starts moving and running. As they are essentially paint, you may need to wait for some sections to dry and be careful about smudging areas with your hand. They are very opaque and bright and fun to use. And just all the details I put like dashes, like the little patterns on the bird and the green, the blue and yellow beak. I like that because it actually brings up the water. So there's under the sea because it's water. With the moon and stars, it's not quite some of the stars that I would try how to go around the star with the black outlines. Yeah. Now to do is the edges now. Frame and border your decoration. As you are using a pre stretched canvas, you may choose to either wrap and continue your artwork to the edges, or create a new pattern using your paints and poskas. I like it. I think I did it. So the pink with the blue actually pops out. Edges of pink and blue, the zigzags with under the sea with the moon, the bird, the star with the love heart. Dashes with the birds, star, and then love heart, and pink daisies with green, with the green stems. <laughs> Make you feel happy and glamorous. And it will, they can have a have play and beautiful out in the beautiful sunshine. It's very free, very free artworks. And I am a superstar, but I love my patterns and dashes. Good luck for your brightness colors. Now your artwork is complete. Once you feel like you are happy with the patterns and top coats, and most importantly, it makes you feel bright, you can sign your artwork. The last step will be my sign my signature, and then that's it. I will sign my signature down the bottom of my work. So you could do it too.